welcome to the BSG Master YouTube channel, where I discuss the business strategy game in all of its various forms. For this video, I am going to review yet another video that's on YouTube that's supposedly by someone who's giving advice about the BSG game. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to say that I am going to be uh, commenting on this video and, and criticizing it based on the fair use doctrine of US copyright code for non-commercial, non-profit, and educational purposes where I'm expressing my First Amendment right to comment on things in the public interest and for students who are in the strategy games who are required to play the business strategy game. Okay, so again, there are lots of videos on YouTube, and this is one that, that is, has quite a few hits. Um, so this, this comes from a guy named Dave Anderson, and uh, he, he has a, a bunch of uh, videos on helicopter stuff and trucks and everything. So, uh, you know, he seems like a pretty nice guy and, and he, he has a lot of interesting videos. So I have nothing against him personally, okay? And uh, I think that, uh, you know, go ahead and visit his channel and see all of his cool, cool trucks and things that he has. Uh, but when it comes to the BSG game, do not listen to him. He does not know what he's talking about, and he uh, does not know how the game works. Now, does that mean everything he says is bad? No. But if you don't know the difference between good or bad, it's very difficult to, to follow someone like this and, and because uh, he gives so much bad advice that, that uh, it could really put you in trouble. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll cover some of the details, uh, but I'm not going to cover everything in his videos. So he has a series of videos, okay? So this is his third one in the series, okay? And so I'm going to go through some very specific examples here of how you know that he doesn't know how the game works, or he doesn't even know basic accounting principles. Um, and, and that will, of course, mess you up in this game if you, if you get your accounting wrong, okay? So here he is, uh, he's covering the wholesale marketing screen, okay? And... One of the key things you have to watch out on the wholesale marketing screen uh, and also the internet marketing screen and on the distribution screen, you have to be watch, watch very carefully this row that says surplus or shortfall of, of branded pairs. So you see at the moment, he does have a positive number. He has a small surplus in each region. Okay, now earlier in the video, he had a big negative in Asia and that he was drawing conclusions based on what he was seeing in the performance window. And you can't do that. So if you have a shortfall in any region, that means all of the calculations that it shows you in the projection window for net profits and any cash and all that are all off. They're all wrong. Okay. Uh, but in particular, your profitability. So you always have to watch this screen to make sure it doesn't go negative. Because as soon as it starts going negative, then that means you're trying to sell shoes that you're not producing. And you can't do that, okay? And so what will happen is you're, when you have a negative for, for, the, for the shortfall, okay, uh, that means it will always cost you money. Okay, it will always make your profits go down because you cannot sell shoes you don't have. And so the worse, the more negative it is, the worse it will be on your results. That means that anything that decreases the shortfall, okay, will look good. Okay, and there's lots of things that can decrease the shortfall that are bad. Okay, so for example, anything that decreases demand will cause that shortfall to go up and convert it to a surplus possibly, okay? Now, what would be a common thing, okay? So one way of decreasing demand, okay, is by increasing your price. So increasing your price may be good or bad from a profit perspective, but you don't know, okay? Maybe increasing your advertising, 
Okay. Well, well, increasing your your advertising uh, actually well increasing your advertising will increase demand. Okay. And anything that increases demand will make the shortfall worse, and that will look bad. So this is if you have a negative, you cannot tell whether other items are good or bad from a profit perspective. You can only see how it affects the shortfall, and and usually it makes the the exactly the opposite happen. So basically, anything that's good, like possibly raising the price, can look bad or may, might look good, but you don't know. You have to correct the shortfall first. So what happens is that the shortfall will mask all the other results as far as whether it's, whether you can judge whether it's better for profits or worse for profits. Okay, so I'll go ahead and and proceed here and notice that he will he will make an adjustment. He will increase his advertising. Okay, and he won't even be looking at profit. He's looking at ending cash. He doesn't know the difference between ending cash and profits. They aren't the same thing. Okay, so he will see that he'll adjust, he'll increase his advertising, and you'll see that the, the, the surplus here will fall. And whenever the surplus falls as it approaches zero, that usually will mean that ending cash will go up because you're saying that you're actually selling more shoes and you get more cash for that. But that doesn't mean it's more profitable, okay? But in this case, you can judge the profits because as long as that's positive. But he'll, he'll increase the advertising to a higher level, and, and the end of cash will go down, but the profits will go down. But he doesn't know whether, whether its profits will actually go down because what happens is the, the, the shortfall masks it. So if he, if he does something like raise price, he might be able to increase advertising, and, and he'll still have a surplus, and then he could see that maybe profits go up. So he's making two critical mistakes, okay? He's not watching a surplus for it to go negative, okay? And when it does go negative, you have to fix it first because otherwise the projection window uh, is, is not reliable. The, the, the next thing is he's, he's mistaking ending cash for profit, that he does that for the whole game. So on all of his videos, he's not looking at ending profit. He's looking at ending cash. Okay, he's not looking at that profit. Okay, he's not even looking at EPS. Okay, and that might explain why he's not even in, in first place here in, in this point of the game. But we'll we'll look at that later on. Okay, so let's just hear what he says. This is where we are going to start um, trying to figure out what we're going to do with uh, marketing. Now, last year, let's say in North America, I did fifteen five, fifteen million five hundred thousand. And I've already done some crunching of the numbers, and I'm going to do 18.5 this round. Why? Okay, so here we go. So he sees he's, he's watching ending cash. So, so here's that profit, okay, and it's 112.040, okay? And look at EPS. It's 631, but he's not watching those, okay? He, he's watching ending cash, okay? So it's at 9.444, okay? But that's because he has... Uh, quite a bit of surplus. He has, you know, like 95,000 shoes surplus. So that will fall, and, he, and the cash will jump way up. But that probably doesn't go way up. It does go up, okay? But it doesn't have the nearly effect of, of, of the cash. So this is where you can get confused about whether something's more profitable or less profitable. So it was slightly more profitable, but he thinks, oh, it's a big advantage because his the cash goes way up. Because if I do, let's just say $1 million more, Sorry about that. If I just do one million more, look at our ending cash. I've got nine million four forty-four. If I spend one more million, oh hey, it jumped up two million. Okay, but not because he made more profit. Look, the, the this went from one twelve zero to one twelve five nine one, so it's only like five hundred thousand more. But this went up by a couple several million dollars on ending cash. But that's because his shortfall, his surplus. Went from like 90 something down to six. Okay, so he's basically saying we're selling all of our shoes. So he's basically he's converting more of his inventory to cash, but 
that's, that's not necessarily profitability. So it just so happened that profitability did go up, so that's good. But as soon as this goes negative, okay, then ending cash will get worse and that profit will get worse. But if you simply uh, fix the situation with, with the shortfall, okay, by doing something like either setting more shoes over there or raising your price, anything that increases your surplus, then that higher level of advertising might actually be more profitable. But he's not seeing that. So it very well could be that a 20,000, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 million is actually more profitable. But he'll never see that because he doesn't have a surplus when that happens. Okay? So you have to be very, very careful. This screen does not work properly if you have shortfalls. But let's see what happens here. So let's go up to um, a little bit more. Let's go up another million. Let's see what it happens. I'm at 11,875. Uh, oh, I went down. Okay, I went down. So I'm right at my max, probably somewhere around 21 million. Right at my max. Again, let's go back here. Oh, okay, I so went down. He's at minus okay, 31. Okay, I went down. So I'm right at my max, probably somewhere around 21 million. So he still is minus 60. He made it even worse, okay? So now his net profit is down as well, but we don't really know. So... If, if he had the surplus, this that profit could be well above. This could be 113, 114. He doesn't know, okay? Because this negative 60 masks what the true net profit is. Yep, I'm at, I'm at my max around 21 million. So I'm going to hang right there. And that is exactly how you uh, gauge things. If you have everything set up. So that's exactly how you don't gauge things. That's how you confuse yourself. And you think you're at a, at a high level of advertising. You're thinking you're up at the optimal level, but you're not. You're fooling yourself because he doesn't recognize how this screen works. Uh, play with those numbers. See what happens to your bottom dollar. And if it increases a little bit, go for it. I mean, 21 million, you're thinking that's a lot. Well, I, of course, I'm pretty far ahead in the game. You're probably going to max out somewhere around five, four or five million, maybe, your first couple rounds. But play with the numbers and get acquainted to what they actually do. Okay, I'm also going to play around a little bit with uh, retailer support. I shouldn't say play around. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and skip on, okay? And we can kind of take a look at a, another spot in the video uh, that might be a little bit more instructive about uh, what this guy doesn't know about the game. So we're going to go ahead and skip to where he starts talking about private label. So let me go to that section here. Okay, finally we are at private label production. And you're gonna run your private label production just like you would with the superior materials and enhanced styling features. Okay, so it's not the same. So first of all, look at his SQ for private label. He's at 6.0, 6.5, and 6.5 stars. But look here, the global minimum is 5.0. And look how much superior materials he's using to get up to a 6.0. He's using 80% superior materials. It's very, very expensive, okay? That's costing him a lot of money. Okay, and he's at 50% at 46% for superior materials. Again, that's costing him a lot of money. The thing is, he doesn't know that there's absolutely no benefit in this game whatsoever of having an SQ for private label is greater than the minimum. It's not even a tiebreaker. It just costs you money. So he could be making a lot more money in private label if he simply brought these down to a 5.0. So that's how you know someone doesn't know how to play the game, is they haven't researched it enough to know that Anything on SQ that's greater than the minimum gives you no benefit, okay? So he's just, he's not making nearly as much money because he's basically throwing money away, having a higher SQ than necessary because he, he apparently thinks that having a higher SQ increases his chances of winning private label. But that's not how it works. The, the buyers will, as long as you have a price that's below their maximum, as long as your quality is below I mean, as long as your quality is above the minimum, then your bid is live. 
So at that point, the, the, it's only a matter of your price, whatever your, bid, your price offer is. So whoever has the lowest price, the buyers will buy from that. Then they'll go up. So as the price increases, the, the buyer will keep on buying until they are finished with buying all the shoes that are on their list. Okay, so his, basically he doesn't have any clue what he's doing in private label. So that's just another clue that he doesn't really know how the game works at all. So let's take a look at another section. Okay, so we can look at where he's talking about uh, uh, finance, okay? And, and so let me go to that section here. Okay, so here he's talking about finance and cash flow. And one thing he just doesn't even recognize is that this yellow area here is actually an error. It's a warning. And if you read closely here, it says, if sales targets are not met, an overdraft loan is likely with this low cash balance. So the game is telling you that the cash balance is low. It's, it's under $20 million. Okay? But he doesn't even recognize that this is a problem. He thinks it's okay. So let's see what he says here. And uh, took out a hundred and thirty-five million dollar loan. I have a ended projected balance of eighteen million, uh, almost nineteen million. I think that's a pretty good cushion. No, the game is telling you it's not. You don't want to have too much cash because you'll get raked over the coals when it comes to income tax. What? What? <laughs> okay, he doesn't even know about accounting. Okay, you don't get taxed on your cash. Okay, there is no income tax on your cash. Okay, and we, I can prove that to you. I mean, I mean, first of all, it should be obvious if you've had accounting. Okay, um, you get your tax is based on your your income. It's called income tax. It's on your income. It's not a cash tax. Okay, so the 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 name of the tax is right in the name. Okay, now now with businesses, okay, you you get to do some deductions, okay? So you can deduct things like your, your interest expense that you, you pay on loans. And if you do like charitable contributions, you can deduct those. Uh, but in this game, the income tax is 30% on your, on your uh, income minus those expenses. So we can go to that section. So I'll go ahead and forward on to that where he starts going to the income statements. Okay, so let's go ahead and just forward through here. Okay, so he goes to the income statement. So let's see what happens here. Last thing that I'm going to talk about is the footwear industry reports. You've got to go through these. I think the most important one here. Okay, so first of all, this is his game. He's in year 17 so this is the year 16 report he is team a a enduro sport okay so he's almost to the end of the game he's not even close to being in first place he's so there's only three teams that are really competitive here at all okay team e which is way ahead of him then he's he's in basically a third place position and quite a ways back but the, the overall game is not very competitive because you have two teams, Team G and Team D, that are losing tons of money. So they're not even comp competing, okay? And then Team C and Team F are really, really low income. So this is not overall a very competitive game, okay? So he's basically in third place in a game that only has three good players at least, okay? At least moderately good, okay? So at least he's making money. So it's not like his advice is completely terrible in every respect. But he's certainly not a winner, okay? He's not, he, he never does a video after this that shows what his results are. So that's another thing you should judge is do they show you a year 20 result? If they don't, that should be highly, highly suspicious, okay? Why are they so energetic and willing to share their information at the beginning of the middle of the game when they think they're doing well and not show the end of the game, Okay. It's because they didn't get anywhere near first place, okay? So, so uh, I mean, that's what you, you have to assume, okay? 
So also here, let's look at income taxes. You, you can see his income taxes right here. Okay. So he has the operating profit is right here. So you're taxed on the operating profit minus interest expense. Okay. And minus any charitable contributions. So I already saw on another screen, he is donating $5 million. Okay. To charity. So if we calculate this, if you take the operating profit and you subtract out the interest expense because that's deductible, and then if you subtract another $5 million from that due to that charitable expense, the result is $165,951. If you take that number and multiply it times uh, 0 0.30, a 30% rate, you get exactly 49,785. Which is exactly what his his uh, his result is. Okay, so income tax is a thirty percent tax based on operating profit. It has nothing to do with cash. Okay, look at his cash on hand. Okay, it's twenty five. Okay, so I mean, it would make no sense for for his income taxes to be four, fifty million dollars on a cash of twenty five. Okay, so basically, he's completely confused about how accounting works. So don't follow someone who doesn't know basic business and doesn't really know the game. Even though they might have some good advice, you cannot trust them. So so, uh, so that's really also, I would say go ahead and have fun watching his other stuff, but do not follow a word he says regarding the, the BSG game. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll be doing some more reviews and, and I'll be giving some additional information about the year 11 strategy. I've already covered the facilities and I'll get moving on to other Subjects pretty soon in, in the future. Thanks for watching.